London, Kentucky is a quiet, rural town surrounded by rolling hills in the heart of Kentucky's tobacco country. It is a traditional town where many farming families have lived for generations and most of the people know and trust each other. At 11 a.m. on the day before Thanksgiving, November 25, 1992, the children of Paces Creek Elementary School were looking forward to a special holiday luncheon before they left for the long weekend. Keep up the good work. How are we doing over here? Oh, we've got the blue going. Where's Scotty? Oh, we're doing a turkey in the hand. Ten-year-old Scotty Baker was especially excited. After school, he was to stay at his grandmother's house until his father picked him up on Thanksgiving morning. Scotty planned to spend the entire weekend traveling alone with his father on a long-haul trucking run. Since his parents were divorced, Scotty relished the time he spent with his father and loved to ride in the trucks his dad drove for a living. Following an afternoon tutoring session, Scotty was scheduled to go home on the bus at 3 p.m. to his grandmother's house. For Scotty's mother, Ruth, it would be the first Thanksgiving her youngest child was away from her. She and her daughter decided to surprise Scotty and pick him up before he got on the bus. The single mother only had what remained of the day to see her son before he left on the trip with his father the next morning. Ruth waited in the car while her daughter went in to fetch Scotty. I picked Scotty up at school that day instead of having him ride the bus to his grandmother's house because he was going to be gone with his father the full Thanksgiving weekend. And I just wanted to see him before he left. Do you guys know where Scotty is? Scotty's sister asked some of his classmates if they'd seen him, but they hadn't. Do you know where Scotty is? His teacher said that he had not shown up for his scheduled after-school tutoring, but figured he had skipped it to start his long weekend. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Where's Scotty? I don't know. I looked outside for him and no one's seen him. I asked the teacher... Ruth hadn't called ahead, so she thought Scotty had probably taken the bus as previously planned. I just thought there was some sort of a misunderstanding as to you know, whether he was supposed to stay that day. I thought he just rode the bus back to his grandmother's house and somewhere we had just missed, missed him. Scotty's grandmother lived close by, so the boy Dorothy. would certainly be there by now. I'll go upstairs and check for him. Great, thanks. Dorothy! Have you seen but Scotty's grandmother had not seen him get off the bus that day. Ruth called his friend's parents in the neighborhood. This is Scotty's mom. But none of their children had seen Scotty either. When we searched the neighborhood and realized that he didn't go home with any of the kids, we went back to school um, to try to find out if maybe he'd stayed there for some reason, missed the bus, or... At that point, we didn't know what to think. Scotty had never got on the bus and went home with another child or went anywhere without telling either myself or his grandmother. Ruth found the principal in the main office and asked for his help to locate her son. By this time, the teachers had all gone home for the holiday weekend. The principal told her he would try to contact Scotty's teachers at home. Then Ruth made an alarming discovery. She saw that Scotty had been signed out at 11.20 that day. The sign out book was just laying there on the desk and I just happened to look down and see it and see his name on it. And it said Scotty Baker had been signed out by Patricia Smith. Ruth recognized the name. Scotty's father had a cousin named Patricia Smith that Ruth had met once years before. It was strange that the cousin would have picked up Scotty without telling anyone in the immediate family since she wasn't authorized. The principal called the school secretary to find out more. He reached her at a hospital where she was visiting a sick relative. 
The principal asked if she had released Scotty to a woman named Patricia Smith six hours earlier. She confirmed that she had. The secretary recalled that Patricia Smith, a dark-haired woman with glasses, walked into the office at about 11.15 a.m. The young woman said she was Scotty's cousin and was picking him up to take him to his father. When Scotty's fifth grade class passed by the front office on their way to the Thanksgiving luncheon, the secretary summoned Scotty with exciting news. His cousin had come to take him early from school. The secretary knew most of the children's parents and relatives, but she had never met Patricia Smith before. She added that Scotty didn't seem afraid of the woman, and he left willingly. The principal conveyed the news to Ruth. She was upset to learn that Scotty had been released to another person without her permission. She was taking him to see his father. So that kind of made sense to me. Because if Donnie was out on the road and he was just going to swing in, um, he might have had somebody pick him up. But it was strange to me why it would be somebody that Scotty didn't know. Apparently knew each other and Scotty was Ruth didn't know Patricia Smith either, did nor did she know her number. She demanded that the principal call the authorities. 